Hey there, and welcome back to another DreamWorks video. And today, we're going to be talking about a little film called The Bee Movie. And we're going to ask the question, what the hell were they thinking with this thing? Like, I get the concept, right? A film about insects, that's fine and dandy. Bugs Life, Ants, James and the Giant Peach. All good films with great stories that heavily feature, or exclusively feature, insects. And so, a film about bees. Okay, I can get behind that. And it's made by DreamWorks, and yeah, in the mid-2000s, they were still tracking pretty well in terms of their quality. The hype's growing here. Jerry Seinfeld, oh, yeah, he's funny. This is shaping up to be exciting and fun. And then the film released, and it was like, oh. You know in animations, when people have a moment where they get a really good idea, and a light bulb appears above their head? Well, this film's like that. If the light bulb starts to overheat and then explodes, sending shards of molten glass flying in every direction. It's bad. It's just, it's bad. And whilst its popularity has somewhat recovered in the last decade or so due to meme culture on social media, it's not because it's genuinely a good film, but because it's a dank meme of a film. A film so strange and so ridiculous that you struggle to actually believe it was made at all. A film that you could mine for memes for years and years and never run dry. But that doesn't make it good. A cult following is just that. It's a cult. Cults are almost always small. And this one's no exception. And let's be real, this film did fail, both critically and commercially. On the commercial side of things, it had a budget of $150 million. $150 million. And it grossed around $293 million, which isn't so bad, but when you factor in all those hidden costs that don't get rolled into the budget, it didn't really make as much money as you'd be led to believe. And even despite that, I feel like that's still a pretty low gross for DreamWorks. It's bookended by Shrek the Third and Kung Fu Panda, both of which had huge box office success. And I mean, it even did worse than films like Over the Hedge, which are definitive B-list DreamWorks movies. Realistically, the only films it did better than in the DreamWorks catalogue are the 2D ones or the Aardman team-up films, which for the most part were financial disappointments, with some being borderline box office bombs. So I don't think you can really parade this thing about as any sort of financial triumph for the studio. And then on top of that, it was also a bit of a critical disappointment. For the most part, people didn't like this thing. It has a 49% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, and not even audiences salvaged it, with an audience score of 53%, a rotten rating. And its average score on top of that is 5.6 out of 10. Plus, its Metacritic is 54 out of 100. This is Shrek the Third level reviews, but it doesn't have that massive box office return to offset it, so it makes it feel even worse. Seriously, what were they thinking? How does this movie have a bigger budget than Kung Fu Panda of all things? A budget only $10 million less than Shrek the Third. Ugh, what a joke. So yeah, I think we can all agree that this film didn't do well. And in theory, it is bad. But that's just what audiences and critics have to say. Maybe we could formulate our own opinion. So let's dive a little bit deeper, starting with the storyline. B-Movie tells the story of Barry B. Benson, a honeybee who's just graduated from B College and is about to start his first job as a honeymaker. However, after learning that once you have your job, you're stuck in it for life, Barry has a crisis of faith and runs off to join the pollen jocks, bees who go out and collect pollen from flowers. And on his first expedition, he gets caught in the rain and is rescued by a florist named Vanessa, who protects him from her overzealous boyfriend Ken, who happens to be allergic to bees by the way, but we'll talk about that a little later on. And later, Barry returns to thank Vanessa for saving his life, revealing to her that bees can talk, and starting off a weird romantic attraction between the two. Yes, you heard that right, a romantic attraction, but like I said, more on that later on. After spending some time together, the pair go to a supermarket, where Barry discovers the honey that bees produce is taken by humans and sold on for profit, which in turn leads the forward-thinking Barry to label this as animal exploitation. And thus, he launches legal action against the human race for the exploitation of bee workers. And after a short but intense legal battle, the bees somehow win the day and the honey industry dies. And whilst this is a brief win for the bees, it also means that they no longer have jobs. Because apparently they need money for some reason, I don't know, it's weird. And because of this, they also stop pollinating flowers, and all the flowers, and plants, and trees, everything in the entire world starts to die. Because apparently, there are no other pollinating insects. However, there are still some flowers being stockpiled for the final ever Tournament of Roses parade. 
And of course, Barry and Vanessa then steal the flowers, hijack a plane, and then bring the flowers to the bees who pollinate them, and somehow this rescues the world from this ecological crisis. And then Barry opens an animal law firm, which represents animals who have dispute with humans, and now he also lives with Vanessa. Extrapolate from that what you will. Ugh. So yeah, the plot is very weird, but more on that in a bit, because first, I do want to acknowledge the film isn't all bad. It isn't this terrible abomination that should just be thrown into the trash. It does have some bright spots. For one, it is funny. Some of the jokes do land, and it's clear that these jokes help to make the film what it is. It is absurd. It is ridiculous, but it does make you laugh. And on top of that, the voice performances were good. Like, obviously they weren't revolutionary performances, all things considered, but they weren't bad, they had great chemistry, and they helped elevate a film that was in desperate need of elevation. But even these factors couldn't save this thing. They couldn't rescue it from its own weirdness. But really, that's what the main problem is. It's too bloody weird. It feels like an off-brand Pixar. And Pixar loves doing weird shit. Talking fish, a rat becoming a head chef and opening his own restaurant, a garbage compactor falling in love with a probe robot, and visiting fat humans in space, the emotions of a person being actual living beings inside your head, a world where dinosaurs are the dominant species and have their own farms and society and where humans are feral pests, or a world where an old man can attach balloons to his house to make it fly, and where there are special collars to make animals talk. Like, those are strange and out there concepts, but they make these films in a way where it no longer feels strange, no longer feels alien. You think, oh yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. They blend in storylines and concepts that just work, and thus you're able to suspend your disbelief even for the most ridiculous of ideas. But this film just utterly fails to do that, and I don't understand why, but I suppose that just some of the storylines are too ridiculous. I mean, what the hell is up with the Barry and Vanessa romance subplot? Yeah, it's never explicitly stated, but it's clear there's romantic undertones to their friendship. And like, I just, I don't understand how a woman could be romantically attracted to a bee. Not meaning to kink shame, I suppose, but you know what? I am. It's weird. Stop it. If they were clearly coded as just friends the entire film, or she was like an animal activist or something like that, I'd get it. It would work. But since it's clearly not written that way, it feels icky and strange and completely devoid of any logical reasoning. Am I seriously supposed to support the woman who falls in love with a bee when she's already with somebody else? Like, I realise that in the years that have passed since, creators, and I'm pretty sure Jerry Seinfeld, have come out to say that the whole romance slash sexual aspect of the film was unintentional, but too bad! It's there! I don't care if it was meant to be there or not. The reality is, it exists, and it's so goddamn squeaky. No! And on top of that, am I seriously supposed to root against the dude with a bee allergy, whose girlfriend slash fiance, I can't quite remember which, keeps letting a bee inside her home when he's around, and then straight up leaves him for said bee? Honestly, part of the problem is that Ken is actually right a lot of the time, but we're told he's this intolerant buffoon. But if you caught your partner flirting with a bug who could kill you with one sting, how would you react? But let's dig a little bit deeper into the film and address the actual story themes. Now clearly, as its overarching message, the film was trying to do a story about environmental exploitation. Pretty normal premise for this type of film. Pixar had their own version in WALL-E, which addressed some similar concerns, but obviously in a far different way. And this is fine. That overarching message is good, but the way in which they go about telling that story is very clumsily handled. We start off the story and it seems like a pretty straightforward adventure type film. And these types of films usually are. But then after a bit of development, we're suddenly in a romantic comedy. Even if they want to deny it, it's true. And then Barry's suing the human race and the story suddenly becomes a courtroom drama. And then it kind of implies that workers striking is a bad thing by using bees no longer pollinating and killing the world's ecosystem as an example and blaming the bees for it. So no, don't try to increase your rights, workers. Get back in line and keep your mouths shut. And then it returns to being an adventure story almost instantly. And so we finish with the bees saving the day. And really, I just don't think they really knew what they wanted the film to be. And so whilst humour and the acting was good, the actual story and the characters, not so much. And so it became supremely forgettable, and indeed it was mostly forgotten for a decent chunk of time until somebody noticed how strange and absurd it actually is, and thus it was immortalised forever as a meme. God, it must be demoralising for your film to be more notable as a joke than as a film. But anyway, 
that's the end of the video and I would like to say that these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the B movie? You think it's as weird and bad as I do? Or do you think I'm way off the mark? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.